Okay, I think this next interview you're gonna watch is probably one of the most important interviews I've ever done. I mean, we're all struggling for jobs nowadays and jobs aren't going anywhere and a lot of people don't have training. Well, you wanna be catching a wave that's going, <laughs> that's beginning, not a wave that already hit the shore and is coming back out and disappearing. So what are those things in our society that's growing and you know, you're like a surf, Border, you know, you're looking for that wave that's starting so you can ride it for a while. Well, healthcare is one of those. And it's really because of old farts like me, you know, there's so many of them yeah, that we all need more healthcare. Yeah, and so healthcare is a booming industry in this, this country. And in the next like 10 years or something, it's gonna account for almost 30% of all the new jobs that are created. So anything new is important because they've been growing and want people. And see, this next interview is with the local community college in Montgomery County, where I live outside of Washington. And it's a woman who runs all the health careers there. See, at a community college, you can get a degree in two years and start start at making like $50,000, at least this is in our neighborhood, right, and actually get it all paid for too because so many hospitals and things like that looking for people and they give scholarships and, and even the, uh, the community colleges have money and, and they do, it doesn't cost hardly anything to go to these community colleges, especially these private universities or even the big universities and everything. All you want is a job and the skills to start. And it doesn't even have to be a degree. It could just take a couple months course, you know, and you get a skill in something as an entry level position. But boy, there are very few places you could get just a two year education and get $50,000 to start. And it doesn't matter what age you are. Right, you could be 70 like me, you know, and starting. You're gonna be working for 20 more years. What the heck? So what's two years of, <laughs> of learning that stuff? So, and you can do it full time, part time, or whatever. So it's very flexible like that, you know. And, and and they're very helpful people. I mean, I think the community college is the best deal we have in America for getting education and training. And like I say, you don't have to get a degree because other programs they call certificate programs and and, and just job training programs because they're always helping people get jobs. That's what they're all about. You know, and even if you don't know English well, they have other programs you know, uh, to test your English proficiency you know, for free and uh, teach you and courses you know, just on that. So, so your language skills are, uh, are good enough to get, get decent jobs. You know, because we have a lot of immigrants in the country now. <laughs> just like my grandparents came. You know, they didn't speak. You know, and when I was growing up, they were still speaking Slovak. <laughs> and so it's the same with the new immigrants coming here. Uh, so it's an important thing in our country now. And all these private universities that charge you tens, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand, that's nuts. You know, uh, check out this, your local community college, but watch this and you'll see what it is. And it's actually for people who have to care for other people in your house. You want to know how to be a, a better caregiver and take a short little course, refresh and learn about these kind of tips. And just for your own health, <laughs> you have to care for yourself, that kind of thing. Um, and somebody's calling me, so you watch this and I'll be right back. Well, great, tell me your name and <laughs> where am I? Um, I'm Angie Pickwick and I'm the Dean of Health Sciences at Montgomery College's Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus. Wow. <laughs> and this is what's called a community college, or what do you call these places? This is a community college. Community college. And it really yeah. serves everybody. It doesn't matter yeah. what kind of career field or what kind of skills you want to update. This is the place to come. Well, I mean, I, I believe that. I'm a fan of community colleges, so <laughs> I'm biased too. Not only her, but me. Uh, and, and really, you're in the health professionals, right? Training people for to get skills, to be in this booming industry, to take care of all those old folks <laughs> that are happening. So tell me what, what you know about the supply and demand for for this kind of career. Well, I think there'll always be a demand yeah. for um, people to get into healthcare. And again, as you mentioned. You know, all the baby boomers all are getting right. up there, so there's going to be a lot more opportunity. You can't outsource this to India. No, you cannot outsource this to India. Um, but really, two things. You have people who are going to be retiring, uh -huh. and that will provide vacancies. Um, for oh, I see, in the healthcare profession. Uh -huh. And for all of us that, that are going to need care, there will be many more people mm -hmm. that need to be Maybe. served, and so you need to increase your workforce. Mm -hmm. So because of retirements and then uh, an increase in, in demand for services, there will always be jobs in healthcare. Mm -hmm. In some 
areas will be more in demand than others. For example, you know, nursing and home care kinds of things are really going to be big over the next few years. So nursing and home care. You have, you have some data I think you mentioned before we started. What kind of data do you have like on the nursing and home care stuff? Well, for nurses, um, between now and the year 2000, we're going to The year be, 2000? I'm That's sorry, over. 2020. <laughs> yes, please. Working too hard to, here. <laughs> 2020. 20. We're going to so need... Seven, eight years? Are there... We're going to need 700,000. Seven hundred. That's almost a million more than what's Absolutely. employed now. Absolutely. Wow. Even I think here in Maryland, between now and I think it's 2016, we're going to need like you know close to 167,000. Wow. 167. This this in Maryland, and that's for what were those positions again? These are for registered nurses. Registered nurses. Who could work in hospitals, Bills which or, would be acute care, uh -huh. um, HMOs like Highland mm -hmm. Permanente. Um, other freestanding medical facilities and doctor's offices, as well as mobile services, home services, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all those things. And this is registered nurses. And how long is the program to be a registered nurse? Well, it's two years. Two years. So in two years, two I could be a registered nurse. Yeah. Two academic years to be a registered nurse and go through a community college like you guys do, right? And take your NCLEX exams. Upon My what exams? NCLEX. Your NCLEX? <laughs> it took me two years to pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and then I'm a certified nurse, and, and uh, there's what do we say? Almost a million and some a million and a half, or what was the total number? Seven hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand. Yeah, seven hundred thousand. A million people. Now there's yeah. somebody behind them that helps support the nurse, uh -huh. and that is a certified nursing assistant. I see. So that's a, a, a less demanding schedule to become one of those. Less, that's less demanding. Yeah. Yes, that's How a shorter that? course. It's about a one semester course. One semester, and, and I that's could be non-credit. That's a non-credit course. Right. That can be done through a workforce development and continuing education uh -huh. unit. So in one semester, so we're talking about a couple months, right? right? I could become a certified nursing assistant, nursing assistant, and be part of this boom in, in, in jobs and careers that are going on. And that's somebody who helps the registered nurse, right? Correct. Does it make sense even to get that first while you continue to work on, on becoming a registered nurse for two years? It's not essential, but sometimes yeah. that, happens that happens because the CNA or the certified nursing assistant yeah. gives somebody kind of their foot in the door. Right, to that's what I mean, right, area. to learn the system. So if I was somebody now looking for a job and saying, well, even at any age, I mean, even like oh, at my age, I mean, I mean, I'm almost 70, I feel like I've got 20 years or more mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, to try to do something of value. You know? mm -hmm. Uh, and so for taking a month or two of courses, you know, I could become a certified nurse assistant and, and probably not have too difficult a time getting a job, depending on the area of the country Absolutely. probably, and, and start learning if I want to do more of this healthcare kind of stuff, right? So as a certified nurse assistant, what kind of money do I got to do to, to be one? Well, I think the whole course with the classroom and the uh, uh -huh. clinical together is about $1,600. $1,600. So $1,600. And did I see right that if you're a senior, you get <laughs> some of that well, weight? that's correct. I yeah. think it's going to be the age of 60. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it's like 60, 62. So I get a lot of that and just pay the fee versus the tuition right. or the two things. Yep. So I get that. But that that's kind of a cool concept because if you have people who have been um, working in different industries right. and they really like being around people and they really like to help, you know, it would be great to have people as a right. second career come back and pick up a course like that and, yeah. and come and out start and, out and do healthcare. this. Absolutely. Now, you say you're part of workforce development. So if I was unemployed and things like that, are there any funds for possibly retraining money to become a certified nurse assistant? I, I believe in the... Um, County. Yeah. Every county right. has yeah, a, a workforce so investment board, yeah. and sometimes there are some dollars right. available there. Um, the college does have a small uh, uh -huh. supply of funds for scholarships, but they're a little bit competitive. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can find kind of sponsors or people out there ah, who are willing to provide some scholarships for students, and so our financial aid department usually I does. see. Would that be, I mean, I heard of things like hospitals are looking for assistance, and so they give some scholarships, like you do the training, and then they get a job. And that's kind of a gentleman's yeah. agreement. There's yeah, I see, right. And fast that right. legally, if they decide at the end to not go there and there, work, whatever doesn't. the stipulation yeah. is. So there's that kind of money. And so would you find out about that by going to hospitals or going to your program? Both. Both, I see. So it's really both ways. Our financial so, aid department is very aware of, of all opportunities those kinds of, yeah. that are out there. 
So if I was looking at a job for two, three months already and getting nowhere to stay, <laughs> be something oh, to get a foot in the door, and in two, three months, I got a pretty short thing going. And that's just one of many. Yes. Because we do a physical therapy, occupational physical therapy, therapy yeah. aid. Occupational therapy aid. Well, yeah. Physical and occupational, it's kind of all packaged right. together. And they work with the patients in helping to get them dressed for their treatments or uh -huh. set up supplies and things like that to work with either a physical therapist or occupational therapist assistant. Wow. Or then eventually occupational therapy or physical therapists mm -hmm. at the top. That's kind of like the So the hierarchy. assistants are, are like uh, the, the certificate programs, you know, the shorter time and then the... The aides are the certificate Okay, programs. that's what I mean, right. The and it's a two-year degree for physical, a physical therapy assistant. Or, oh, I see. It's okay. a doctoral program now. Ah, oh, therapist. really? Wow. Ah, so that's big time. Mm -hmm. All this limping old people. <laughs> There'll be a great demand again yeah. because of the aging population for people yeah. who work in physical therapy. So if somebody had a career that they were related to in something that you know dealt with sports or things like that, that they're more oh, used to thinking about uh -huh. physical health and strength. So if I was a coach somewhere and I yeah, said, yeah, you I want to be a something yeah, like that, different. you know. So it being a uh, physical therapy end of the business would be uh, uh, of interest. Do you have all ages going into this? Absolutely. Or, really? Uh, Sometimes we have students who are, who, are, who are just legal, basically, because to go out to some of the clinical sites, I like to make sure the students are at least 18 or if they're oh, working, legal. Around, more more legal. <laughs> working around things like radiation, they oh, have to be I a certain see. age, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But we've had students into their 60s and 70s. Wow, oh, that's cool. So for We had somebody who was a physical trainer who came back and did the physical therapist wow. assistant two-year yeah. degree program. And he's got a great job now doing physical therapy at a freestanding facility. I see. And because he was a trainer, so he yeah. was I mean, it was stuff. a perfect fit for right. him. And he just right. loved the coursework. I see a lot of these courses, actually, in your program. Like, I mean, you know, if I could take care of mom and dad, you know, it wouldn't be bad oh, to have it. Yes. No, that happens. That yeah. happens. Because when yeah. you have the new students coming in for the, the certified nursing assistant, and you ask them what motivated them right. to come and join the class and that kind of thing, they'll say, you know, I'm taking care of a grandparent or a parent or a cousin or an aunt or uncle. Yeah. And so a lot of people use these courses to increase their own knowledge so that they can take so. care of their family and friends. I mean, are you massage therapy? I mean, you see Absolutely. one course, uh, you know, for 150 bucks or something, these massage therapy schools are going to charge $5,000 or something. Plus they're finding out that the people who do massage therapy uh -huh. actually benefit from it as well. I see. Not just the, just uh -huh. not the client or the patient. So if you are someone, you know, getting older like me with different aches and pains, it's not a bad skill to know exactly to understand right. your own physiology, Absolutely. whatever you call this. You know, to get by in life because you've got to use this equipment for a long right. time now. Plus there's all <laughs> kinds of things that you can do, like when you think about these nice little shower things. Oh, you yes, use, yes. When you do your back and your shoulders, you do you're actually that. massaging and of course yeah. there's all kinds of no, stuff. No, even, I mean, that's why I can't see you know, first aid. I mean, just think of uh, uh, people. Absolutely. You're in a large office environment. It'd be nice to have some people that are doing no first aid and you can send them here for a short course. It doesn't look like they're even long periods of time, four hours that's or right. something like that. I know I took all my kids. On their first day, we learned more kids. We learned this guy. I learned probably more than they did. And let's talk about CPR for yes. a minute, because even though CPR is not providing you with entry level skills to get employment, yes, um, it does provide you skills to save a life. So it could end up being somebody in yes. your household. It could be somebody in front of you at the grocery store. Yes, you could be anywhere and have something happen, and the Good Samaritan law protects you when you respond immediately until the ambulance. You know, it, it's a CPR course. Uh, uh, gave me the encourage actually say my wife's life at dinner. Oh, she you? was having a steak salad. She's so polite, she wouldn't even say what was going on. And after a while, hey, she's something stuck here. You know? And because of the CPR course, I had, you know, we talked a little bit about that. I yeah, and, and I did this homily thing. And it was, it was so funny, there's some nurses next to me when I'm doing this, she said, Underneath the rib cage, underneath, <laughs> and this wad of meat came out of her mouth. You know, it, it, it was just cool, <laughs> and, and that's because of a CPR course. I feel that. Well, just recently, one of our um, students who completed a credit first aid class uh -huh. 
um, actually was able to attend to somebody and save their lives. And wow. He wrote an article, wrote you know back to yeah. college, and said, "I feel so fortunate I took yeah. this course because I saved." So, I mean, your whole life. I mean, why go out and take a golf lesson? That's going to help you. Yeah. You take a lesson like this, and, and you know, you you get safe. And and all our family and friends. And I'm sorry, I get emotional. I'm just thinking about life. <laughs> but you know, again, as I get older, I feel that. Oh, yeah, I love crying because it, it means like I'm really talking about something important about crying. <laughs> so I want to get out there and cry every day to so make sure I'm doing something worthwhile. <laughs> but all that stuff, I mean, healthcare, you know, must, you know, has to be one of the most fastest growing segments of our population. Well, it is obviously. This is why we're broke. <laughs> but aside from that, we're still going to need it. I still need a lot of people. And, and places like you at the local community college sounds like just a great place. Well, I think a, a lot of people don't understand all the opportunities there are. Yeah. There's some little soft cover book called uh, 360 Ways to Put Your Talent to Work or something oh, like uh -huh. that. And it lists like 360 health science. Oh, they're all careers. health science stuff? Oh, I gotta find just, it. it. I think it's, uh, what's it? The, um, oh, I'll Council, find it, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, DC, uh, it's a spin-off from the government. Right. Uh, I know. I'll find it. Federal Health Council or something. I like see. Huh. And they're all but, that. I see. Yeah. So it of... talks about high school education, pre-college, mm -hmm. college no education, what. all the way up to being a physician or a, a dentist. You know, and you can see, I mean, right now our economy, you know, what is it? I forget, like 18 percent of our economy or something like that is in healthcare. Mm -hmm. In our life, you know, we spend so much on it. And now we're all living old, older, we all have to have no more about that. And so if you get into it, even as a, a sideline, it, 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 it seems just an important part for anybody's life. And we need to focus more on being preventative. Yeah. yeah that's the and that's where kind of you get into yeah. the health sports. Coach, uh, I run four or five miles every day. <laughs> and now that I can't run as fast, I'll walk that far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's fun. I mean, it's therapy. It's so many things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm so glad you're here. Thanks oh, for thanks. doing all this. Yeah. So now you're looking for a career. <laughs> here it is. There's money, there's health, and there's jobs. <laughs>